Hey guys, it's me, Hannah, and I'm back with another read-along video, and it's Nancy Drew and the Clue Crew, Case of the Sneaky Snowman, and you know the rest. Previously, in the third chapter, Nancy, George, and Bess were all splatted with eggs. Ryan eggs, be exact. And one of them just hit George's parka. Yuck! But now, oh, it's time to find out the mystery. Did the snowman really did it? Let's find. Let's read the rest. Let's read the fourth chapter and see. Chapter 4 Cold Case A snowman did this? Bess cried. Maybe she maybe it was Sherlock. How could Sherlock be so mean? George asked. We gave him a smile, but a broccoli nose? Bess added. No wonder he wants to get even on us. Oh, so now it's my fault, George. Oh, so now it's my fault, George demanded. Guys, guys! You guys, you guys, Nancy said. It might be not, it might not be a real snowman. Sorry. Then who is it? George asked. I don't know, Nancy said. But we'll find out. I thought we were going to look for Sherlock, Bess said. Mm -hmm. The pest who sue the... The pest who sue those eggs could have knocked down Sherlock too, Nancy explained. So let's start looking for clues. The girls squatted down to study... The message Nancy found some woolly green threads inside the letter. The person who wrote the message must have been wearing something green, Nancy said. She carefully picked up two threads, then she dropped them into one of the plastic bags. She's always she always carry around she always carry around in case of a case. Bess pointed to the message. Look at, look at the letter S, she said. It is, it's written in a curly way like a snake. George found footprints leading away from the message. George found, per, George found footprints. Leading away from the message, they were smaller than. They were smaller than the ones near Sherlock. And instead of a diamond design, they had a starry design on the soles. Nancy and George wanted to look more for more clues, but Bess had other plans. She had to practice for this. She had to practice for the ice show that afternoon. Can we watch? George asked excitedly. Mm -hmm. I love to see Alexei. I love to see Alexei and, and Svetlana the Bruno skate. And Bess Marvin added. Nancy added quickly. The girls hook arms and walked through the snow on the way out of the park they saw marcy's little sister casey the six-year-old girl was lying on her back making snow angels as she waved her arms up and down she sang at the top of her lungs i'm getting a puppy a cute little puppy Nancy, Bess, and George stood over Cassidy. Did your parents say you can have a puppy? Nancy asked. No, 
silly, Casey D said. Mama, Madam Chocolata said I get one. Nancy groaned under her breath. It's Madam Chocolata, Madam Chocolata. Madam Chocolata. Not everyone believes in Madam Chocolata, you know. Nancy said as they kept walking. Oh yeah, George said. She pointed to a long line of kids outside Dewey's tent. They were all chanting, "We want Madam Chocolata! We want Madam Chocolata!" Nancy stared at the crowd. Then she shrugged her shoulders and said, "So they want, so they want hot chocolate. Big deal." George, Nancy, and George got permission to watch best practice. An hour later, Mrs. Marvin drove the girls to the ice skating rink in her red van. As Mrs. Marvin parked on River Street, Nancy glanced out the window. She saw Toby. She saw Toby Leo. She saw Toby Leo. Who standing in front of the Toys for You store? His nose was pressed against the glass window as he gazed at the new sleds. Maybe Madame Chocolata told him he get a new sled. Nancy thought glumly. Inside the inside the rink, Nancy and George sat on on the bottom bleacher. They cheered for Bess as she skated out on the ice. She wasn't wearing her costume yet; just a pair of pink sweats. It's hmm. Spectrana and Alexia skated out to meet Bess. They were wearing matching black and silver bodysuits, still skating. Alexia and Alexia Spectrana. Huh. Huh. Way over his head, there they are! Nancy whispered. They're so awesome, George said. Alexa and Spectrana skated over to Bess. Today we practice as we, as if we're in the show. Spectrana announced in a Russian voice, in a Russian accent. Hit music! Alexa cried out. The song Winter Wonderland. And, and, and the song went to Wonderland and blew through the loudspeakers. Spectrana, Bess, and Alexa held their hands, held hands as they glided across the ice. I can't believe Bess is skating with Spectrana and Alexa Duvina. George whispered. Nancy turned to George, and said, <laughs> "And she, and she hasn't fallen once." Whoa! Nancy turned her head just in time to see to see Bess swanning across the ice on her bottom. Oh no! Nancy cried. Stop music! Stop music! Alexa shouted. Sled, best sled, to a stop, but didn't stand up. She just sat on the ice with her head bowed. Don't worry, Bess. Spectrana said. Even we fall sometimes. Alexa said. He pointed to his knee. See, holes and tights. Bess forced a, a little smile. She let Spectrana and Alexei help her <laughs> to her feet. Mrs. Marvin sat on the bleacher behind Nancy and George. See, oh dear, she said. Bess must be a best. She said. Bess must be a bit nervous. George leaned over to Nancy. Or、oh, she thinks. Or she's sticking about what Madame Chocolata told her. She whispered. Nancy nodded sadly.
The ice show was in three days. If they were going to find out what happened to Sherlock, they would have to find out fast. Well, will Nancy, Bess, and George find out the case of the sneaky snowman? Stay tuned while I read you the fifth chapter of this book, and I'll see you tomorrow.